Welcome to the series called 12 Powerful Names of God. And like I've shared before, I believe that one of the best ways that we can learn more about God and who he is, is to dig a little deeper and discover so many of his names because each name tells us a little bit something about God. So I'm gonna jump right in. And today we are looking at how Jesus is called Emmanuel. And the first verse I wanna share with you is this prophecy and it's found in Isaiah chapter seven. And I'm gonna start at verse 13 and these verses say, Isaiah said, listen, house of David, is it not enough for you to try the patience of men? Will you also try the patience of God? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. See, the virgin will conceive, have a son and name him Emmanuel. And now I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, and these verses say, actually, I'm going to start at verse 22. It says, now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. See, the virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will name him Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. So in these two verses, we see that in the Old Testament, it was prophesied that Jesus would come. And we know that Jesus is the son of God. And then we see this verse in the New Testament after telling us about the birth of Jesus. And the verse specifically say that this, all these things happened because to fulfill the promise that Jesus would be born of a virgin and his name would be called Emmanuel, God with us. Now, when we see these two verses, it's easy to think that in the Old Testament, they didn't have the presence of God. But now with Jesus in the New Testament, we do. And some of that is right, but not all of it. If you walk through the Old Testament, we see right away that the presence of God did exist on earth. It just existed in a different way. And the main difference is this. In the Old Testament, we see the construction of the tabernacle and how they built the tabernacle so that people could come and offer their sacrifice for the forgiveness of their sins. And so it was a distant relationship. The only person that could access the physical presence of God was the high priest, and he could only do that once a year. And so in that general sense, people did not have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God because they didn't have access into his presence. The only access they had was through the high priest. But even though that's true, God was still very much with his people. And so I'm gonna walk you through three different instances where we can see the presence of God that is with us. For our first example, I wanna go back to Joshua and read parts of chapter one. So this is Joshua chapter one. I'm gonna start at verse one and I'm gonna jump a few verses, but I hope you can follow along. Now it says, verse one, after the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant is dead. Now you and all the people prepare to cross over the Jordan to the land I am giving the Israelites. Okay, it goes into the more specifics. Verse five says, no one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. I will be with you just as I was with Moses and I will not leave you or abandon you. Now we go down to verse nine it says, haven't I commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I'm not sure how much you know about the story of Moses and the Israelites. We know that Moses was led by God to the people of Israel. He led them out of Egypt due to some disobedience from the people. The people wandered around the desert for 40 years. And because of some disobedience that Moses had towards God, he was not allowed into the promised land and he died. And Joshua was the one who then became the leader of the people of Israel and brought the Israelites into the promised land. And so we see here two things. Well, probably more than two things, but the first is very specifically, these verses say that God was with Moses 
And if we go through the Old Testament, we see that this is very much true. The first example I can think of is when there isn't a tabernacle, but Moses makes himself a tent and he goes into the tent where he spends time with God. And we see that Joshua also joins him. So Joshua has been with Moses this entire time. He's watched him lead. He's watched him worship the Lord. He's watched him do all these things. And so he himself knows that God's presence was with Moses. That's experiential knowledge, right? The second instance we see of God being with Moses is when Moses goes up to the mountain and has a very specific encounter with Jesus. So much so that God said, you know, Moses asks to see his face and God says, if you see my face, you will surely die. And so, but he says, Moses, turn around and I'll go past you. And even that encounter changed Moses' face, that his face was literally shining for a really long time because of that interaction. So we see very specific examples of how God was with Moses. And there are so many more instances in the story of Moses that we see the direct hand of God with Moses. We also see that God is the one who leads Moses, who tells him what to do and how to do it and when to do it. And we see Moses respond to that. So God's presence was very much with the people of Israel and also with Moses. But here we come into a transitional period, right? The people of Israel had been led by Moses. The people who came out of Egypt, that generation died and it was their children who then were adults now coming into the promised land and we see this transfer of power. And I don't know about you, if you've experienced this or not, but anytime there's a change of leadership, there's always this sense of, okay, is this gonna be better? Is this going to be worse? Is God gonna be with Joshua just like he was with Moses? There's a lot of questions. And I'm sure even Joshua himself, who had been with Moses this entire time, had those questions. Am I really able to do this? Can I actually bring these people into the promised land? Will you be with me like you were with Moses? And God speaks to him directly and says, have I not commanded you? Do not be afraid. I am with you always. And if we follow the story of Joshua, we see some very specific interactions that we see that God's presence was with Joshua just like it was with Moses. And so regardless of who's in charge, God's presence doesn't change. And there have been for sure a lot of transitions that I've seen in church leadership or even in the government or even, you know, when I went from being single to being married and you kind of question how that's gonna look like, what the changes are gonna be, how it's gonna work, are you still gonna feel the presence of God, all these different things. And when you know God and when you follow God, you see his continued presence regardless of what the leadership looks like, regardless of the changes that are happening in your life, that God is still there that God is with us and we can take this promise, do not be afraid, I am with you always. The next two examples I'm gonna share with you are from the New Testament, but before I go into those examples, I want to remind you about something very specific that is crucial for us to understand. In the Old Testament, God's presence was there. He was with people and he had very close relationships with a lot of people. And in some instances, those people were filled with the Holy Spirit, but then the Holy Spirit would leave them. They didn't have the Holy Spirit with them at all times. They had specific interactions with God or with the Holy Spirit, but it wasn't continual. And we see that this is a huge shift between the Old Testament and the New Testament, where in the Old Testament, God led them, God directed them, God was with them, but the personal access they had with God was not there. That all changed through the death of Jesus Christ. Because one very important verse in the New Testament is when the veil in the temple rips in half, and this veil was what separated people from 
a holy place to the holiest holy place, the very presence of God. And it's Jesus and his relationship with God and through him that we have access to God's presence. And then in Acts, we see that after Jesus died, he rose again, he went to heaven and sent his Holy Spirit to be with people. And so when we get saved, the moment we get saved, God's Holy Spirit enters us and stays with us. So in the Old Testament, you know, they were led by the Spirit, they were led by God, but they didn't have continued access to the Holy Spirit. But now, after the death of Jesus Christ, this is the big shift that we have the continual presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So now that we know that big difference, I want to share the second example of God's presence with us. So turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 8, and we're going to read verses, so Romans chapter 8, verse 38 to 39, and they say this, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights or depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I love these verses because there's no ifs, ands, or but about this pre the presence of God saying that there is absolutely nothing that can separate us from God. That once we are his children and we have that relationship with him, nothing can break that. Nothing can pluck us out of his presence and take us out of it. And because we're humans and we like to find little caveats or loopholes, these verses cover all of it. Not only does it say nothing will separate us, but then it goes into very specific things. And we see this relationships, power, whether spiritual or political, um, you know, whether we climb Mount Everest or we dive to the deepest depths of the ocean, that regardless of where we are, regardless of what we are doing, regardless of what is maybe trying to separate us from God, it's not going to work. That is the bond that we have with Christ when we are saved. One of the lies that Satan loves to tell us is that when we're sinning or maybe when we are unsure that God's presence is for sure not to be going to be with us. That, you know, when we're not living the exact perfect way that God is somehow angry with us and is far away. But that's not the truth that we see in his word. When we see God's word, we see the complete opposite. We see that it's in the darkness and in the pain and in the mess that God steps into that, into humanity to then reach out to us and have a relationship with us. That whatever is going on with us, regardless of what sins that we've committed, that God's presence is with us because that is the extent of his love. That without that ability to step into those things, we couldn't come to God because God understands that we're like, we just really, we can't comprehend it because he's so much bigger than we can even imagine. And so he comes to us exactly where we are to have that relationship with us and to help us grow in him and to experience him so much better as we walk a road with him. But regardless of what happens in our life, he's not going to leave us. And that's one of the things that I absolutely love about God. And the older I become, the more I appreciate it. Because when I was younger, I didn't really think a lot about transitions. In my mind, there was maybe like transition from junior high to high school or like high school to university and then you know single to married <laughs> i didn't really think past that but as i've grown i have realized that there are a lot more transitions and in a lot of those instances it can feel like our relationship with god changes maybe a little bit and 
I, I sometimes feel a little bit lost, right? I'm not exactly sure what's gonna happen next. I'm not really expecting to know where I'm going or this particular season isn't what I want it to be. And it's easy to question God and his love for us and his presence with us in those moments. But scripture is so clear that regardless of what we're going through, whether it's a transition, a new phase of life, you know, some good times, bad times, that his presence doesn't change, that there is absolutely nothing that can break that bond and that that is an eternal bond that will never change. And so to me, that's really encouraging because life is hard and there are so many hard things and it's easy to go through those hard things and think, God must have abandoned me. He must hate me. Where is he? And scripture tells us that when we are saved, he is right there. We're in his hands and nothing can take us out of it. And so to me, these verses give so much hope because regardless of everything else that can change around us, God never changes. His presence with us does not change. It is constant regardless of anything else. The third example I want to share with you can be found in Matthew chapter 27. And it's the end of the chapter. And I'm going to read from verse 16. And it says, the 11 disciples traveled to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshiped, but some doubted. Jesus came near and said to them, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you and remember I am with you always to the end of the age. Now, this is a really interesting transition that we see. We see from the Old Testament to the New Testament, the relationship that we have with God completely changed. And we can't see that better than with the relationship that Jesus had with his disciples. Because these disciples lived and traveled with Jesus for three years. They saw him in his ministry. They saw the miracles that he committed. He saw, they saw his death and his resurrection. And now what happens next? When we go through life, we can be very used to a specific way that God's presence feels, right? In this particular instance, we feel so close to God and maybe something changes. And it's easy in that change to forget that God's presence is still going to be there. And for the disciples, they had his physical presence with them for three years. And here we see that Jesus is about to go into heaven and to stay there. But before he does, he gives his disciples some directions, which is where we get the Great Commission. But then he says, and remember that I am with you always, because even though his body was no longer going to be on earth, that he was gonna be sending his Holy Spirit. And so this promise is the promise of the Holy Spirit that we are sealed with and that comes upon us and that Jesus is with us as we go and fulfill the Great Commission, which is to share the gospel with the people around us. So this is a clear promise of God's presence with us as we live our lives, that as we're doing ministry, as we're obeying him, as we are following the things that God has called us to do, that he then says, and don't forget, I am with you always. And so this transition that we see, the three kind of different verses that I shared with you, the first is in the Old Testament where the presence of God is not necessarily individual. And then we see, we are reminded that regardless of what happens, that there is absolutely nothing that can separate us from God. And then we see that tested. In these verses, this is a huge test. Jesus goes from being physical to being spiritual for these people. And I'm sure they thought, oh my goodness, it's not going to be the same. I'm not going to feel God's presence. He's not going to be there with me. And maybe God knows that this is their fear. And he says, you know what? It is going to change. It's going to be different, but 
is still going to be my presence. You're not going to be able to see me with your eyes and to touch me, but I'm going to be with you. Even as I go and ascend into heaven, I'm sending my spirit. It's going to be with you. It's going to be with you regardless of what's happening and to the end of the age. I love how God's word shows us so many different instances of this promise that God is with us and test that promise too. Going from the Old Testament where that relationship was maybe a little bit more distant to then the New Testament where that relationship becomes so intimate, but then also the difference between God's physical presence and the presence of the Holy Spirit and how even through all these changes, God's presence doesn't change, that he, even though it might be in different forms and different ways, he's still there. And so I find this really, really encouraging. And so I hope it's encouraging to you. And if you're feeling alone, just remember that Jesus is Emmanuel, which means that God is with you. He is with you always. He is with you regardless of what's going on, that if you are saved, you are in his hands and nothing can take you away from that.